We've helped a ton of anglers get into fishing Puget Sound for sea run cutthroat trout. And when I'm talking with anglers about exploring Puget Sound, I usually tell them to start with the gear that they already have. That gear they usually already have is usually a nine foot five weight trout rod with a weight forward floating line. And that's usually adequate to at least explore the fishery to see if it's something they really wanna take a deeper dive into. If they do like fishing the beach, then having the right tools for the job are really important to really maximize the fishery. For Puget Sound specific gear, we usually suggest a nine to 10 foot fast action fly rod with an integrated shooting headline. An integrated shooting headline is a line that's designed for making longer casts and it's not a head that is like looped onto some sort of back line to it. It's all fully integrated. There are times when I use a full floating line or an intermediate line or a sinking line and I'm not gonna really get into that today, but most English starting off will start with an intermediate line. That intermediate line allows for them to fish the largest variety of flies as well as the most amount of the season. An intermediate line is a staple for the Puget Sound beach angler. When targeting sea run cutthroat trout, we use a lot of unweighted bait fish patterns like flat wings or deceiver style flies. So having an intermediate line really holds that fly in the zone. We also deal with a lot of wind waves and boat waves and so that intermediate line that's underneath the surface allows you to be connected to that fly to be able to feel the hits as well as be able to get a quick hook set on the fish. Recently I tried both the Coastal Quick Shooter and the Rio Outbound Shore Intermediate on the new Sage R8 and I absolutely loved both of those lines on the rod. The outbound short is a heavier line and I could feel it really load that rod a lot deeper compared to the Coastal Quick Shooter. But once I made a quick adjustment, when I switched the lines, I really liked how both of them cast it. Not all fast action rods cast the same though. And for example, I casted a Sage Sonic nine and a half foot six weight not too long ago. And I really liked the outbound short a lot better on that rod. Generally, what I have found between these two different lines is that beginning anglers like the outbound short a little bit more than the coastal quick shooter, while expert casters like the coastal quick shooter a little bit better. I feel like the reason for this is that the outbound short is a heavier line with that head being uh, a little bit shorter too. The head is 30 feet on the outbound short compared to 35 feet on the coastal quick shooter. Also, that outbound short is 235 grains whereas the Coastal Quick Shooter is only at uh, 210. Having that deeper bend in the rod from the outbound short, beginners love the feel of that thing, and it really carries a lot of the running line out when they stop up nice and high and let that thing sail. Whereas the Coastal Quick Shooter, you have to focus a little bit more on the loop formation of the line. So if you're a more advanced caster and you're used to throwing a really tight loop, the Coastal Quick Shooter Throws, throws laser loops, that intermediate line really cuts through the wind really well and really can punch that fly out there a considerable distance. Now the outbound short has this really cool aqua kind of ice blue color to the running line portion and then that 30 foot front head has two colors to it. The, the back part of the head is like a grayish color and then transitions to a, a clear intermediate front 15 section. This line does have the new Rio slick cast on it. It's part of their premier line and so it is a very durable line. The Coastal Quick Shooter has also a clear head to it but it's a full 35 feet of clear and then the back running line is a chartreuse green color i really like the chartreuse green on the, the back part of it i love the clear head uh, one issue i have when i'm switching between the lines is gauging how much of the head is out of the rod tip and with an intermediate line if you're going to pick up to recast you want to be able to one pick the pick the fly actually out of the water and not have too much line out but the other part of it too is knowing where your fly is because of the retrieve and a lot of times those cutthroat will chase that fly in really shallow and so if you're pulling your fly out of the water too soon you might be missing fish and so on the outbound short having that gray section before the clear section is a great indicator to know when I need to pick that line up and, and make that recast. So if you are using the Coastal Quick Shooter, it will take some time to kind of get used to that 35 feet of clear. But also what you can do is when you're stripping that line in and you're stripping from the chartreuse to the clear, when that hits your hands, you can count strips of line to uh, into the clear to know where to pick up. Once you hit that chartreuse to clear transition in your hand, maybe it's five strips or six strips, 
and then and, and that's a good time to pick it up so you'll just have to kind of count it out and engage it so that you can just make those casts so if you already have a rod and your rod is more of a tip flex rod it doesn't really bend down deep then the outbound short is probably going to be a great line on that rod and it's going to help you cast recast quickly so what i mean by that is all those false casts that you're used to making with your traditional trout line to get a considerable distance with the outbound short the idea is that you want to feed some line out until you get to that connector where it goes from the aqua to gray so just the 30 feet are at the tip of the rod and then you you send that thing if you have too much of the aqua green that aqua ice blue color if you have too much of that running line out of the tip of the rod it gets really clunky and it's actually going to limit your distance um, most likely and so you want to keep it in close and this is great on the beach because a lot of times you have rocks behind you they want to eat those flies if you uh, throw that fly you know down at the rocks you open your loop up so if you don't want to smash your flies on the rocks you don't want to lose your flies minimize the amount of false casts you're making and so if you're only picking up and throwing 30 feet behind you and then launching it saves your flies if you have that issue minimizes false casts which means that you have more energy you're not tiring yourself out and you're just getting your fly back out there in the water faster if you can make a cast with two or three false casts compared to making five or six false casts you're going to be able to just have your fly fishing in the water much longer than if you're just wasting time with that fly in the air so if you have a deeper loading rod and that rod has a lot more flex into it Putting an outbound short on that rod is not going to be a good thing for your cast or that rod. And so in that case, maybe going with the Coastal Quick Shooter, if it's a really deep bending rod, you might not be able to put either of those lines on your rod. And not every rod can be fished out in the sound. So it might be more, you might just have to stick to your trout line if, that's, if you really want to just use that rod. Or maybe even look at a full intermediate trout line like a Rio Camo Lux or just buy a new rod. Some rods are just not designed or capable of casting distance. A lot of times trout rods are designed to make a cast with a dry fly to a trout that's 20 or 25 feet away, not throwing a weighted streamer at 60 to 80 feet. Sometimes the right line will fix the problem, but that doesn't always fix the problem. Sometimes the rod is just not the right tool for the job. Okay, now maybe some of you might have a fast action five weight rod, and so you wanna put an intermediate line on it for, uh, for fishing the beach. Now here's one of the problems is that the outbound short, the lightest line they make is a six weight in the full intermediate line. If you really wanna go with the outbound short, they do make a five weight that is a floating running line, and then that 30 foot head, half of it, the back half of it, it is hover. So it sinks at about an inch per second, and then the front part of it is the clear intermediate that sinks at two inches per second. So you will get a 30 foot intermediate sinking head, which that can be a great option, but it's not gonna be the full intermediate line. These days, I almost never recommend anyone overlining their rods. And so with caution, I am gonna tell you that one of our staff has a nine and a half foot five weight Sage X, and he actually put the six weight Coastal Quick Shooter on it and the thing casts awesome with that. And so you might be able to overline uh, your five weight with the six weight coastal quick shooter, um, or you'll have to go with that outbound short that has the hover intermediate tip. In the description below, we have links to our website where you can pick up one of these fly lines as well as all sorts of other Puget Sound specific gear like flies and rods and stripping baskets. And man, we have it all for you guys. So. Check that out. It's free shipping on our website. We ship really quick. We can get it in your hands and get you out on the water. And if you'd like to try out an outbound short or a coastal quick shooter and you're in the Puget Sound area, come on down to the shop. Give us a call. Let us know you're coming and we can let you try out either of these lines or both of them. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button so we know that you found it helpful. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button so that we know and make sure to check out our channel for other helpful videos on fishing Puget Sound.